Hey everyone, welcome to JoJo's World. Good morning, salutations, and hospitality, fair traveller. Oh, we, we love hospitality. Please. Little canapes and hors d'oeuvres. Please, take a seat by the, uh, by the buffet over there. Yes, that's right, it's a full buffet filled to the brim with a gamut of fun and enticing uh, things like um, American opossums, apparently. Uh, all freshly boiled for your pleasure. That's right. Where? Nick is referring to a series of opossum images I sent him immediately before recording. I'm Liam S. Smith, one of your co-hosts. And I'm Nick Valentine, the other one of the co-hosts. Coming at you from the JoJo's World remote studio today as uh, Perth, like much of Australia, experienced a uh, weaker lockdown. Ours is mercifully ended once again uh, mm -hmm. in response to the Delta variant of the COVID-19 virus. Which sounds way cooler than it should, you know? He's, like every he's time a, I hear he's about got it. the Delta variant. That means when he takes too much damage, he explodes. <laughs> hey, hey, do you know who I am? My name is Delta Variant. I'm the guy you should be afraid of. Like that's that's what's in my head. I don't know about anyone else, but like I'm Liam S. Smith, one of your co-hosts, and the guy you should be afraid of. <laughs> I'm Delta Variant. A guy who no one likes. No one. No one likes Delta <laughs> Variant. <laughs> And of course, famously, you are Nick Ballantyne, one of the co-hosts, which we have to get in there because every episode can be someone's first episode. Ah, we already did, and that's why and I if... kept the joke going. <laughs> Boom. And if this is your first episode, yes, it's just more of this. <laughs> if this is your first episode, hi, I'm Liam S. Smith, one of the co-hosts. This is JoJo World, our JoJo's Bizarre Adventure <laughs> recap and discussion podcast, where today we are recapping and discussing episode 30 of Revolutionary Girl Utena. Forgot the name of the show there for a second. <laughs> uh, and of course, the name of the episode is something like... Uh, the Barefoot Girl. Yep, I was going to guess That Girl's Feet. <laughs> that Girl's Feet? Yep. Oh my god. Yeah, Archeo just shows up and is like, That Girl's Feet, there. Immaculate. Yeah, I, this is the most um, the most Tarantino esque of the e Utena episodes so far. It's got strong foot fetish energy mixed with um, pederasty. Yeah, and carnal delights. You know, I, I, I guess like nothing graphic, but like thematic content warning for this episode. I guess as it's predominantly around a adult and authority figure seducing a high school girl. No, hang on. More than that. So much more than that. Seducing everyone he can see. Including multiple high school girls. Very correct. So we hate him for that, but he's the villain, so we can live with it. <laughs> I love that, like, at one point he was looking very sinister and they were like, oh, he he's seems, so nice. He seems dangerous. And you were like, maybe because he's the villain. Yeah. He's barely even hiding his sinisterness anymore. <laughs> there might be a reason for this. Yes, the um, reason is he's bad. That What the hell, guys? <laughs> he can't be trusted. Anthe, also looking increasingly untrustworthy, but as we suspect, not of her own volition. Mm, something Anthe weird looking afoot. sinister as fuck in some shots this episode. Yeah, and very occult in a way, with that wind candelabra. Yes, yes very ritualistic. Yes, very Nick, revolutionary IMDb girl. summary. <gasps> Ooh, hit me with it. As Utena has gotten to know Akio, she's started to realise that she has feelings for him. Ooh. But what of the prince Utena holds within her heart? And what of Akio's fiancé? Can love be wrong? Yes. <laughs> Can the love yes be was me uh, editorialising. I, I suspected as much. But at the same time, I do, I do feel like someone on IMDb would just put in a yes. To that, yeah. where it's like, can they come back together and find true love? Yes. End of film. No, thanks. <laughs> Nick. Yes. I have a theory that occurred to me during this episode about the prince. Okay. Of course, we all remember the prince. The prince being the uh, idealistic figure that... Ute that brought Utena out of her parent death depression as a child and she's loved him ever since and also mm -hmm. gave her the ring that ultimately brought her into Otori Academy and the events of the show. We all remember the prince. Uh, yeah. I think I know the prince. <laughs> <laughs> My theory... Of course, we all suspect that the prince is Akio or some aspect of him, but, but not my new theory huh? is that much like with dear sweet Mamiya... 
Okay. The prince was Anthe doing that thing she do. So you think that the prince was Anthe, like, t- what, 15 years ago? Yeah. Uh, okay. But Anthe is like a high school student. Yeah, Nemoro was a high school student for like 40 years. Who gives a shit? Yeah, but Mamiya didn't show up before that. Mamiya was like a memory he had of... We don't know exactly when Anthe started being Mamiya. Ooh. I think we do, though. I think we have a pretty clear clip. Well, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. I think anyway, that theory that's is my, nonsensical. Uh, that, that, I demand that, scientific okay. evidence to prove you wrong, but I think... No. You can't see my Well, that's hand my waving, cold but... shot. If that happens, then <laughs> I uh, win, win the podcast. And... I redact my existence uh, from the universe. If, if I'm right about that, right. you have to watch... Um, the Big O? I was going to say Avengers Endgame. Wait, I have to watch it? <laughs> yeah. I've already seen it. Do I have to watch yeah, it again? Yeah, you have to watch it again. Do I have to record myself watching it being like, oh, No, you just fuck. have to watch it and suffer through it. You know what? I'll, I'll record myself watching Avengers Endgame just for your delight. I won't listen to it. No okay. one will. But that's, this is the bet now. This is on. If you're right, it's happening. Nick. Yes. Here is the episode note for this most cursed of episodes. <laughs> most cursed? Yeah. Hmm. You know why. That, that sounds as wrong as it is. I don't like it. Episode 30, The Barefoot Girl. I decided to live true to myself. Living true to yourself means living as an alien. However, even the alien craft we call UFOs sometimes lose control and crash into things. I swear. I'm not talking about the shadow girls here. If this fucking ends with, and the aliens told me to go make a show. That's it. Wait, that's it? Yep. Do you want that again? (laughs) Hang on. Hang on. So he feels like an alien. Living true to yourself means living as an alien. However, even the alien craft we call UFOs sometimes lose control and crash into things. I'm not talking about the shadow girls here. What? I mean, that that might be the most cohesive one so far. (laughs) Like, to live as an alien? Okay, sure. That's a lot to digest, though. That's a lot to take in for, uh, for an author's note. I suppose that's like being fundamentally yourself as opposed to just being, you know, what you're expected to be. Is that what he's driving at? I think so, because if you're an alien to others, at the very least, you're true to yourself. Yeah. Wow, deep. Yeah, I can get behind that. Yeah, all right. I like that sentiment. That's a good sentiment to have. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. Those are exactly my sentimonies. Yeah, go live your best life, son. Fuck the fucking archaeos of this world. Nick, do you want to get into this one? I don't know. I'm still mulling <laughs> over the fuckery that has been this foot fetish. But let's try yeah, and... Very, um, yeah. very... Like, we've seen maybe one or two episodes like this before, but I would say not to the same extent. Very tonally different episode to what we've become accustomed to. Hmm. Very, um... Very weird, I would say. Like, a very weird episode in terms of... Not, yeah, like you were saying before, not really that graphic, but Mm. very seductive. I'd say it's the most explicitly, like, romantic drama episode to date, even, although it it might be more of a psychological thriller in that regard, ultimately, time will tell. Yeah, (laughs) it's very strange, very strange. Revolutionary Girl Lieutenant is the seminal 1997 erotic thriller (laughs) shoujo anime. I wonder if it'll um, bring out an entirely new genre of anime called... Tenjo anime. Well, it didn't. Damn. <laughs> the anime industry couldn't be... <laughs> it couldn't, couldn't become... be bought by it, Quentin Tarantino. I was going to say it couldn't be puppets, but yeah, it couldn't be bought by Quentin Tarantino's foot fetish. Yeah, ultimately they were too puppets for oh. the rest of us, and that's why this is basically the only thing they made. <laughs> we were not puppets enough to embrace the puppets. Okay, it's the classroom, uncharacteristically full. Wakaba is talking to a boy I'm pretty sure is the Onion Prince, but frankly he's so generic looking I can't be certain. (laughs) He's discussing having a first... or No, having a kiss with a girl and then being like, I told her it was my first kiss. And Wakaba fucking roasts him. Wakaba roasting a lot of people this episode. I don't know if Wakaba roasts many other people so much as gets dragged along by them and is like, oh... But let me do this. And they're like, why are you doing this? She's like, because, fuck you, that's why. They're like, all right, fair enough. She also gets roasted her fair share, but I guess what I'm saying is there's a lot of 
wakaba involved roastings mm, very much so very much so anyway so the boy's like uh I told her it was my first kiss, but she still just ran away. And Wakaba is like, that's just shameless. You shouldn't do that. Meanwhile, Lieutenant's in the back of the class, just staring out the window, thinking thoughts. She does that a lot this episode. Yeah, she's very introspective in this episode and very uh, subdued. Not her normal, like, you should stand up for yourself like she always is. It's more of a, the prince. Mm. How do Mm. I feel about the prince? But as we as we transition to her point of view, there is a line of dialogue that I think uh, is relevant to the rest of the episode and probably show. Okay. So it's Waka by continuing to talk to the boy fading into the background. Um, Look, lies like that are totally transparent and it sets a pattern of mistrust. Ooh. Themes. Then, themes. Mm-hmm. Liam, those are themes. <laughs> Utena's thinking about her prince and how when she was a, a wee babe he kissed her on the forehead and she's like was that my first kiss? Hmm. Can a first kiss truly be from a prince? Meanwhile Akio Ottery, the chairman the older brother of Anthe and the presumptive villain of the show <laughs> has baked a cake Get you a man who can bake you a cake like Akio Everyone wants Akio right oh, now because he yeah. has baked this cake I'm super interested in Akio. He can do both. Ah, uh, y- yes. I think Utena is like, isn't she a bit like, yeah, yeah, I don't know, though. Get you a man who can, uh, um, hang on, hang on, I can, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who can both uh, bake you, bake you a, pl- a nice cake, a nice delicious cake, mm-hmm. and also take you on a soul-corrupting drive down the midnight highway. <laughs> This is what you want in your people. Yeah. So um, they talk a bit about like, wow, so rare that a man can bake. And he's like, oh, well, wait till you taste it first. And then Wakaba and uh, and Anthe come in and Wakaba makes all those same observations while Utena's like, I just said that. Yeah. I don't know why. Utena was already there when Wakaba... Just hanging out alone with Akio. Yeah. I'm wondering what was going on A lot there. of that this episode. Yeah. Anyway. Well, anyway. you remember back in the Black Rose arc, she would go and have solo tea with him quite frequently. That's true. He's like a mentor to her um, in the sense that he's the chairman mm. of the school and she is in the, um, yeah, a student. Yeah, and a high school student. School. Yeah. A simple, sweet high school student. Ripe for the picking, apparently. A mere 15 ish years of age, I assume. And him? Fuck. Well, impossible to tell. Centuries old, maybe. I won't be surprised if he's centuries old. Yeah. It's just like, I've been through this cycle 70 times now. Oh like, my how God. old are you? I mean, this show, I don't, I don't know if the show in, within fiction is doing like a um, cycle of ritual, etc. thing. Mm. Um, but th- like on a metatextual level, this is a show about cycles, right? Uh, as in the cycles of like being in relationships you don't want to be in? And, and that shit? Sure. Or, I or, was more driving about like the, the the structural cycles of the show. You know, each arc is, you know, you go through the motions of one duel with each student council member uh, and then an ultimate villain who may or may not be one of those members. Uh, and then within each arc, there's also like the miniature cycles, like the Black Rose arc. Every episode was that cycle of so- someone's confidant mm. gets frustrated and then brainwashed. Right. So you're saying it's like a big meta cycle. Each yeah. time, where it's like the storytelling mirrors itself. And then perhaps there is some sort of one single overarching cycle that encompasses them all, a sort of unicycle, if you will. Um, so, so that's a single cycle? Then? Yeah. It's all a holistic cycle. And then if there's three main arcs, then contained within that unicycle is mm. what I would maybe coin maybe a tricycle with these three arcs. But, but you've always got the, the push and shove Push and shove. The the push and pull of the central tension of those two sure, cycles the, as well. Um, the yeah, bi cycle. The, yeah, the um the the central two cycles of interpersonal relationships and duels. Exactly, exactly. These bi cycles, when combined together, create the uni cycle with the th- like today we have that weird love triangle as well, and thus get the tri cycle as well. Mm. Mm, uh, quadcopter. Mm, yes. Drone warfare. Yes. <laughs> Satellite laser. We all brought it back to what mattered in this world. That's it. That's it. We got there. I look. Nick, this <laughs> well, is going to be bold. This is going to be a bold moment as I'm about to 
compliment Akio Ottery. Okay, you better tread fucking lightly here, boy. I like his weirdly detailed space painting in his kitchen. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's not Akio. That's just the person who feng shuied his room. Or what, you, you don't think the fucking guy who's obsessed with space all the time put the space painting in the no, room? No, I'm saying he commissioned it, but the person who made it, you're like, I like that painting. It's like, yeah, compliment the painting, not the guy who paid for it, you know? <laughs> okay, sure. Credit where it's due, Liam. You of all people should know this. Anyway, um, Wakaba and Utena bicker back and forth, like, you're just in love with him. No, you are. And he's like... No, you are. Oh, typical wicked girl's plot, say. I think Utena's like, no, what? Mm. We get our first instance of a recurring um, symbol throughout this episode, which is the three candles that initially sit on the candelabra uh, in this room, but then, you know, it's referred back to in an abstract sense mm. and then once again in a literal sense at the end of the episode. Yeah. Um, uh, try uh, candelabra, we- if you will. Yeah, real, like, uh, Lumiere candelabra, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, uh... Beauty and the Beast French candle man. Yeah, I'm literally trying to think of any other candelabras of notes Much in like Western how this literature. show... Much like how this very show is a sort of Beauty and the Beast situation, there's a significant candelabra. <sighs> Oh, jeez, this is a bit of a stretch, but okay, I'll flow no, with it. No, we've talked about this before, about how, like, they both trade on very similar fairy tale. Yeah, 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 um, but, but the candelabra one. Like, Beauty um, and the and Beast, let's roll with it. The candelabra being significant, I don't know how significant it's going to be next episode. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you know, they both get, like, rose iconography in common as well. That's true, that and, like, is true. And atypical princes. That is true. And, and, and headstrong female heroines. That is is also true, I guess. Though they do both fall for very, very... Well, I was about to say ugly men, but Akio isn't really that ugly and potentially also not a man because he could be a mortal. Also, the Beast isn't really a man anymore, is he? He's more of a... Anyway, I'm getting lost But he becomes one again. Nick, do you remember that weird fucking episode in season one where Anthony got lured up to the dueling arena and then trapped in a big rose coffin? I do, yes. What's that about? Um, well, I think Not it's... really much about that since then. <laughs> I, I think it's probably to do with love. You know, is it when you boil it all down, it all comes back to love. And what better metaphor for love than a coffin covered with rose <laughs> shit and, uh, you know, rose iconography mm. and stuff? Okay. Um. A, a real. I, I real don't know where lit, this is going, but you know. I got. A, I got. A, I got a real lit crit hail mary here, Nick. Okay, hit me with it. Come on, save me from myself. The, the ritualistic rose coffin is uh-huh. is much the same as the um the rose greenhouse that Anthe has to toil away in, as well as Utena's childhood coffin uh, that she was crying in, because they're all sort of gilded cages for their for mm. femininity. I thought you were going to say for their uh what what's the word um not tension but uh their their own like struggles and stuff. I don't know what the word is that I'm going for, but it's like they. She lives in her little gilded cage, but she has so much angst and anxiety and whatnot about the prince and stuff. And thus, oh my god, these it's hiccups true. are going to okay. destroy me. Do you want to take a sec because that's going to be bad audio? Oh god, are they? Hang on. Okay, there's a nice little crossfade here as we cut to two um, two conversations of similar nature. Which is Wakaba being like, oh, Utena, you've got to loosen up or you'll never fall in love. Cut to uh, the Snape guidance counsellor lady being like, you've got to start acting more like a girl for your own good. You've got there's to nothing loose. There's nothing cool about wearing a boy's <laughs> uniform. I don't know. Everyone seems to think it's pretty cool. You know what else people think is cool? Going to the supermarket and having a functional life. Do you want... To be that cool, Lieutenant? Or do you want to be a little school cool with your little schoolboy's outfit? Says the vice principal? Yeah, vice principal also there being like, Hello, this is what my voice sounds like. <laughs> Girl, girls should wear ruffly skirts. Uh, I believe his exact words were frilly. How dare you? How dare no, you use his own no, words No, I'm against looking him. at the quote right here. It's roughly. But mine said frilly. Also, well, we did watch different translations things. for you, baby. Well, it should be roughly the same. Translation then? 
<laughs> well done. <laughs> Their scolding uh, is interrupted by the man of the hour, Akio Ottery, showing up and being like, oh, hello, hello, beautiful guidance counsellor lady, uh, which I think I'll attend the staff formal. And he's like, oh, well, I've, I've always wanted to speak with you. And then the vice principal was like, um, uh, could you recommend me for the Amsterdam trip? Thus confirming we are indeed on Earth. And probably somewhere in Europe. Well, we know that... I think we're in Japan. <laughs> oh, shit. Probably in we Japan. We know that India and Amsterdam exist. So we are definitely on Earth. They did not fly their own spaceship. But at the same time, where are they? I feel like with a few different turns of phrase, this conversation <laughs> this conversation could have very much resolved the whole show. If it's like... If they were just like... Oh, Mr. Chairman Akio, how do you? Why is Utena so familiar with you? Oh, she lives with me. Hard cut to him being uh, dragged away in cuffs. <laughs> oh no! So I, I'm pretty sure Akio is just like now. If you'll excuse me, you two, I need this young lady here, and just puts his arm around her and just carries her away. Yeah, very normal. He turns back over his shoulder. Oh, and try not to constrict the students so much with the rules. I expect you to offer them guidance which stresses their independence. Now, what you the see, the school rules mean? are more what we'd call guidelines rather than actual rules. <laughs> see, we just advise them what to do. We don't enforce them. That's the mm. key. A good learning environment is one where <laughs> you don't force the students to do anything. You just... Hope that they come to school. Ah, the Montessori approach. Exactly, exactly. But with fewer rules than that. You just kind of wonder, oh, if they don't show up, they're probably fine. And if they don't show up, then, uh, well, assuming Akio is like one of those survival of the fittest fuckers, he'll probably just be like, oh, they didn't come to school. It's fine. All is well. They'll die. Free market, baby. Yeah. Oh, God, no. <laughs> school being privatised. No. This is definitely a private school. I don't know if it is, actually. Look, it has look to at the be. architecture, Nick. You can't get away with that without the sort of government subsidies that only private schools get for some reason. Mm, that is true. And I'm pretty sure everyone here comes from some line of nobility. So the peasants yeah. aren't here to ruin it. Except for dear sweet Wakaba. Ah, uh, sweet, sweet. Well, I mean, the she's, people's not really hero. A, she's not really a peasant, though, is she? She's Wakaba. Did you just equate Wakaba to a peasant? Nick, I was thinking about the boys in this show while I was setting up today. Yeah. And about how they're all pretty toxic. <laughs> I mean, yeah, obviously. The exception being Mickey, but, you know, once an arc, he does decide that Anthe's feelings and autonomy don't matter and he wants to be with her. Well, yeah, but I mean, you know, all relationships are toxic when you boil them down, Liam. Speak on that. Uh... Actually, no, don't. We don't have time. Okay. <laughs> TLDR, love is about control. So they, they walk to this big hallway and I really like the cinematography of this, oh, excuse me, cinematography of this next uh, sequence because mm -hmm. they're just chatting and she's like, oh, what did you need me for? And he's like, oh no, I just wanted to get you away from those annoying teachers. Love your style, babe. Uh, yeah. uh, and he's, he's, he's really pulling from the season one uh, Toga Kiryu playbook here being like, oh, I just saw how you were standing up for your beliefs. You seem so strong and noble. And then the red background behind the archways suddenly, like like a light switch has been flicked, changes to the um, the pavilion where the rose garden is. Ah, and, and then the Anthe is in there watching them. Mm, from afar, mm, silently. Within her gilded cage. Mm. Unable to intervene, despite what she may feel personally, which we're uncertain of. Mm, indeed. Probably holding that candelabra right now. Nope, she's holding the watering can. Oh, we can fuck. see it. Okay. Anyway, yeah, so... Should, should uh, the chairman really say things like that, she says? That doesn't feel very appropriate. And he's like, I don't care. I'm the fucking chairman. <laughs> You're my sisters, and I, I said to you... Good friend. Uh, but then he does, in fact, finish the sentence. You're my sisters. No, because you're my very special friend. Very special Ooh. friend. You're my sister's very special friend. Oh, my. With no connotations. Well, I mean, he's the chairman. Of course there's no connotations. He's a man of education. <laughs> Come on. A man of standing. Exactly. Who's beyond reproach. He wouldn't slide some other meaning in there. Like, that's not how he would roll. He's the chair. Look at his straight, straight lace buttoned up red shirt and, and <laughs> tight ponytail. He would never do something as reckless as cruise around on the front of a car shirtless at midnight. <laughs> While two teenagers have sex in the back. That, that's not something that he would do. 
He is. No, just he's a straight guy. He does what he needs to do. No fun. No bad times. He just does what needs doing. No thrills, all chills, because he gives you chills because he's so charming. Hey oh. Um, she has a moment where the candle, f- the candle flames that represent her, um, what her attachment to her childhood love for the prince waver in the breeze. Mm. Mm. And then she's like, no, stupid, what are you thinking? But what is she thinking? Deep down, Liam, what is she thinking? Oh, she's developing a crush on Akio Ottery. Oh no, she's slowly developing a foot fetish just by looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> There's this whole sequence now where they're all just hanging out in the parking lot, uh, or wherever Akio has chosen to park his car, because he seems to drive it wherever he wants, <laughs> including to this particular spot that appears to be between two staircases. Well, I was saying that this whole school is made for a car to drive around in, because everything's so wide and rampy. Well, crucially right now, we are at the bottom of a staircase, the very same st- staircase that Mickey's sister, Kazue, um, pushed a music teacher down an arc ago. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. And you've got to respect the consistency of geography, even though it's just reusing the same backgrounds. Mm, mm. We're on the borders of the dueling forest. That's it. Yep, I, We're on the I borders have, of the yep. dueling forest. We have nothing else to add here. It's just borders of dueling forest. Boom. So it's Utena, it's Wakaba, and it's um, Akio. And Utena is not, as you might suspect a normal smart person to be like, she is not like, hey, that's the same car that keeps appearing when my friends decide they want to fight me again. Hmm. Strange. What a coincidence. <laughs> wow, you've got the same model car. Uh, um, has that? What has model that... was that? That was like a... a a 1954 Chrysler or something. I can't remember. But the important Chevrolet. thing is that it, it has the ability to move through the ground and duplicate itself at will. Yeah. Yeah. Like a street shark. Like a car. Hang on. Speak on that. <laughs> uh, well, you know, street sharks, you can make them from jeans. Um, y- you know, you just... Hang then on. You put, <laughs> what do you mean by that? Um, I'll, I'll leave it up to the user slash audience to uh, interpret smart, what I mean. Smart, yeah. That was a trap I was springing for you yep. where I was going to see if you knew whether the street sharks were mutated sharks or mutated humans. Uh, I'll let the audience, I, I can't remember <laughs> the answer, but I'll let the audience just do that. Um, but, you know, you can just make them and thus duplicate them and uh, they move through the ground, you know. I mean, albeit much... And they're totally jawsome. Yeah. They're much less elegant than a 1965... Toyota Chrysler, but you know, <laughs> okay. The new the new version of the show it's exactly the same, but Akio drives a Toyota Corolla. Corolla. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, do you like the thrum of the engine? It's like gets really good mileage. Yeah, you know, oil is optional. This is the uh, 1998 Corolla. You're like, oh, that's... I've been thinking of switching to a hybrid, but I just really like the uh, the feel of the Corolla. You know, it's got a really nice turning circle. Uh, and it's got and the hatchback model gives me all the storage I need. Yeah, and it's got great space in the back to fuck teenagers in. I mean, <laughs> oh hang on, wait. God. <laughs> that's it. That's all he needs in life. Oh, Jesus. So then, yeah, okay, this, the actual content of this scene is that, <laughs> <laughs> which we have not touched it on at all yet, is that Wakuba's like, ooh, are you two on a date? And she's like, Utena's like, no. Uh, then Wakuba's like, great, well, I'll go on a date with him then. Akio, uh, excuse me, chairman of the school, adult man, can we go on a drive together? Sure. I see no problem with this, me being an adult man and you being a small, innocent girl. Absolutely. You you won't get hurt here. This is fine. I do like the joke that um um at one point Wakab is like, it must be fate that I ran into you today like this, and then Utena as an aside is like, you've been dropping by the house every day. <laughs> so good. Not that Utena's uh, just like, stop with your bullshit, Wakaba. Like at every opportunity. Uh and then so they go on a drive and Wa- Utena goes to get in the car too, and then Wakaba says, uh, nah uh uh, three's a crowd on dates. Right, Akio? That's right. I see nothing wrong with this. Bye. And away they go into the distance. This in- is another moment where if Utena had just mentioned this to someone else, we could hard cut to Akio being arrested. <laughs> it's like, hey, did you know that uh, he just like kidnapped Wakaba in a car? It's like, was it consensual? And to it's go like, on yeah, a date with her? It's like, it was consensual, but it did feel... 
but she is a high schooler. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this underage shit, man. And Back probably- in school, uh, Wackabur is like, oh, wow, it was so romantic. And Lieutenant's all, you know, he has a fiance, right? Who we haven't seen since uh, the first episode of the Black Rose arc. He hasn't even been mentioned since then. And Wackabur's response is like, oh, you're such a killjoy. Why you gotta you be like, like this? You like him, don't you? No, I don't. Yeah, you're just jealous, aren't you, Utena? Uh, she's still in denial, those flames flicker once again, and then she's in the Rose Garden thinking, being like, no, I only love the prince. The so prince then why? That, a- that kissed me. And now she's playing basketball. So then why? Why is my heart pounding so? And then she does a big slam dunk and sees his silhouette watching from the window and is so shocked that she falls and sprains her ankle. Uh, and all the team are like, oh, Utena, the best player on, on the team. Are you okay? Yeah. You're better than that, Utena. We don't have any ulterior motives here. We just want you to be okay. We don't want to win the championships. (laughs) Utena, Utena, if you're out of action, we're fucked. It's regionals tomorrow and we all suck. We worry about your health for the reason of winning the championship. I mean, for your health. Like, what? (laughs) So Utena's like, yeah, I'm fine. It's all good. And then immediate next shot is Anthe carrying Utena. Uh, over one shoulder, just being like, what did you do to yourself? And Utena's like, I, I, didn't, I didn't do anything, it's fine. I'm all good, I'm okay. And as they're talking, we get shots of the car engine starting up and like the dashboard lights flicking on. And then Akio just drives his car into the middle of the hallway being like, hello, I'll take you to hospital. I think at this point you were like, Akio, no, you can't, you, you'll get a run <laughs> you somewhere can't over. just... He was driving at speed. You can't just drive your convertible through the school. I mean, here anything is possible, Liam. And the first one of those candles is snuffed out. Ooh. Himamaya can come too. And then, like, most significant red flag to date, but not the most significant in this episode, is Akio says, Oh no, she can't. Three's a crowd with dates. Your friend told us that, didn't she? And oh my god. And, and then it mirrors, like, we, we skipped over this, but, like, there's this thing where as they're driving off, they say, bye bye. Mm. Uh, and then that happens both with Wakaba to Utena and now with Utena to uh, Anthe. And Anthe, glasses glowing sinisterly, standing in the shadows of the hallway, like, m- monotonously responds, bye bye. Just straight up, like, one of those things where it's like Bart Simpson flying a kite at night style, yeah. where it's like, Hello, hello, brother. brother. <laughs> I suppose it'd be the other way around. He's the creepy <laughs> one. I was gonna say what? It would be like Liquid Snake being like, "Hello, brother." <laughs> uh, it'd be like, "Ooh, who's another good one?" It'd be like Anakin Skywalker to Obi Wan late at night, flying a kite, being like, "Hello, Obi Wan." Then Obi Wan shuts the like window and is like. I don't it's like it. so unwholesome. Yeah. And it's just like... And he killed all those sand people too. <laughs> not just the sand people, but the women and children too. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> Nick. Famously a sodge just implied that the sand women weren't people. A sodge? Yeah. Who the hell was a sodge? No, that's a, that's um that's idiot slang that I love oh. for misogynist. Oh, I see. <laughs> I don't know where I picked that up, but I've been hearing it lately and I think it's funny. <laughs> a sodge. Oh man, not bad. Not bad, internet culture, not bad. Drive into the hospital, Utena's like, so your wedding's coming up, right? Ah, uh, well, you know, it's a bit loosey-goosey with the whole <laughs> wedding thing, you know, probably in a month or so. Coming back from the hospital, helping her into the car, being like, the doctor said you should take your weight off the sh- off your feet foot. Here, let me take your shoe off and caress your feet. And Utena's like, oh, you're, you're very much playing with my foot right now. Um, you're a real playboy. You're good at making girls feel good. Oh, am I? <laughs> was that the tone he implied or was he just like, oh, am I? <laughs> That's the tone I read it with. Oh. It could be every you seem tone. Almost, you seem almost dangerous. Because he's the villain. Oh. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We've seen through the lies of the Archeo. I met a prince long ago that I loved. Crucial past tense. Uh, and Archeo's like, is that so? Hmm. Come on, I'll carry you on my back. Or perhaps you'd prefer in my arms. <gasps> and then they kiss. They kiss in the car. Archeo and, just and straight th- up was like, right over her and is like i think we all know that you want my arms and then just dives down boom shakalaka 
and Anthe, carrying the single flame of the candelabra, is in the background watching, glasses glowing, real creepy style. Very sinister, very unknown, very weird. She looks like a fucking ghost. But like, if a ghost was still a per- like a corporeal form of a ghost that was watching people have sex. Like, <laughs> like a, like a... Okay, okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves, they weren't having sex. No, but let's just... You know, it, that's the first step. You know, that's the first step to a good time. It's just being like, let me kiss you. And you're like, all right. And then boom. If this show has taught us anything, it's that horniness is evil. <laughs> I don't know if that's Prove quite... me wrong, Nick. Prove me wrong. Uh, I mean, love in general seems to be evil. Just look at Jury. She loved and then oh, she Jury. just gets hurt every time. Look at Mickey. He loved, got hurt every time. Not really horny. Man, a lot about that those two jury episodes last time, like, really didn't click into place for me until afterwards. Yes. <laughs> like how... There's a lot um, to unpack. Like how the implication that Ruka's whole motivation was to, like, even though he was also, like, a toxic sodge himself, mm. uh, he wanted to save Jury from her toxic relationship with Shiori. <laughs> and so that's, that's another cycle right there, that is. I still can't get over sodge. Like, what? <laughs> it's just such a terrible word. Get like... on board, it rules. Ugh. I hate it, but I love it. And then he just friggin' died. Yeah. And then his was his death the thing that needed that sh- jury needed to shake her loose from her her unbearable crush on Shiori, a woman who by all appearances seems to hate jury and is possibly completely unremarkable depending <laughs> on who you ask, depending on how brainwashed she is. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Shadow puppet play. Uh, UFO crashes into building. The Swan and I'm Lake not talking playing. about the Shadow Puppet Girls. Uh, Swan Lake begins playing by, or rather, starts okay, being we, sung. I, by I don't a, think we need to. I don't think we need to beat for beat this one. Are you kidding? This is one of the best ones. <laughs> so one of them has their special red dancing shoes, who they lo- which they love and they always wear and dance in. And the other one is like, you've got to take off your shoes, otherwise you'll dance in them until you die. So right now she's a ballerina dancing to Swan Lake. And then she does some disco. Uh, and like, In the Earth, Wind and Fire outfit. Yep. Big poofy yep. like shoulder uh, pauldrons. And the retort is that, but you've also got the red shoes. You just never wear them, but you just carry them around all the time. Mm. You're a fool who carries them, but won't wear them. Life's too short to never dance. And I guess the implication here is it is uh, like, it's what? It's going, it's... it's <laughs> the implication what? is what? <laughs> what? So the the shadow girl who won't wear her red dancing shoes Mm -hmm. is Utena continuing to carry a torch for the absent prince. Mm. She wants to be with the prince that she will never find. and The sort of perfect idealised version of him carrying it in his heart but never actually doing anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the the critique against perfectionism whereby... Is it? Well, yeah, because like because, because on the other because on the other hand, mm-hmm. wearing the dancing shoes and dancing till you die is going with you know Akiyotori or Togakiri or whoever like these horrible toxic boys who like you're actively engaging with but will kill you. Done is better than perfect, you know. It's <laughs> it's all about you know you gotta live a little, you know. You can't just stick to the past, otherwise you'll be sad. Uh, you might be more sad now that you're dancing, but you know. Life's too short. You gotta try dancing. Famously a thing that makes you sad, dancing. It makes me sad. Man, I fucking hate dancing. Meanwhile, in the 69 bed... Um... <laughs> Which it is, yes. What? No, that's literally exactly what it is. <laughs> and I, I just... I love that it's called that, but go on. Okay, I, I fully believe that Anthe is acting on a script in this sequence. Like, she's full on... Like, there have been... Clearly been moments where she's been breaking free of Akio's influence in these bed sequences, mm. but I think she's fully acting on orders in this conversation. So you, uh, so you think this is not genuine Anthe talking so much as a well-played, curated version of herself, put, like, for, yeah, she's like, for Utena's benefit? No, for Akio's benefit. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean, like... For Utena to hear oh, such that, yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. she's like, you didn't seem to eat much at dinner tonight. Oh yeah, I wasn't hungry. And then uh, Anthe keeps going. You know, Wakaba told me that there's no such thing as a wrong love. Ooh. What I'm saying is, you should love my brother. 
I don't think that's quite what she was driving at, but it is what she's saying. Because <laughs> she, it basically does there's, come off as like, oh, there's no such thing as a wrong love. It's you just, just got to go with where your heart takes you. It's just that the law is very outdated towards certain relationships. You know, you gotta. <laughs> oh no! You gotta. No, no, no! You gotta think about what's right for us, and it's like, yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah. Hey, Anthe. Hey, Anthe. Is there someone you love? Yes, I have a prince of my own. And they're holding hands, and we're all like, "Ah, oh, it's Utena." But what if it's not Utena? What if it's Archeo? What if we've been rude this whole time? Oh, that didn't occur to me. Of course, it's yeah. The Utena implication is 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 tasty. I was just thinking it was the Archeo thing going on. No, no, no. But I mean, Utena is like a pr- quote unquote from yeah, yeah. Utena is Anthe's prince. Yeah, exactly. In, in the in the idealized sense of the the concept. Yeah, but what if it's a clever ruse that the producers are pulling on us, being like, ah. Oh, you thought it was going to be you, Tenor, because that was the but obvious... it was me, Dio! <laughs> Dio just shows up and is all like, Zawad! And then we're just like, oh god, oh god, what has this become? And it's just a battle anime for like six episodes. Wait, it's already god. a battle anime. Yeah, but, you know, we've talked, we, we talked la- at length last time about we did. The, um, we did. the philosophy of action scenes in this show. That's true, that's true. Well, now it's a love anime. It's a real love-hate anime. Real it can be both. A real love-foot anime. Speaking of love, hate, and feet, uh, Akio is driving around with Toga Kiryu, and Toga's like, ah, so she's the owner of the glass slipper holding the shoe that Utena left in the car. Mm. And, the, and Akio is like, yep, by the way, you're in love with Utena, aren't you, Toga? Yep, I sure fell in love with her when she beat me in a sword fight, then I sulked for 13 episodes. I think his wording is like, I've never had anyone who could challenge my core beliefs. Okay, I got the quote here if you want. Yeah. Losing the duel was a shock to me. I don't simply mean my being defeated. It was finding a girl who shook my core beliefs. It was the only time I've reconsidered how I live my life. Mm. Clearly it didn't take, because now I'm scheming with you. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe he accepted that he couldn't be the mastermind and he had to... Ah, that is that is true. That is That would account for the change. Yeah, so he had to stop taking orders from end of the world and just kind of... And start working directly yeah. with end of the world, a.k.a. Akio Otori. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so my point has been disproven by logic. I've got to change everything by changing nothing. Ah, it's the, um, it's the, oh, there's a joke here. There's a very good political oh, slash social commentary here. Um, uh, it's, I got nothing. I got nothing. There's okay. a joke here, but so many people could hear a joke in their head. Well, much like how I don't know where this car is driving, uh-huh. I don't know what you were driving at with that joke you were trying uh, to set up, so I can't help you on this one. Well, everything changes, but it always stays the same, Liam. You have good insight. She's a fine girl. She is indeed, Mr. Chairman. And they both just lean their seats back and drive into the night, thinking about Utena Tenjo. Still weird. Still real weird. Uh, and then they're back in the back in the kitchen nook, uh, being like, "Wow, Utena, you didn't eat much yesterday. Single candle burning on the candelabra." And she's all like, "Yeah, nah, I'm just thinking. What's wrong? I, I can't answer that." Oh, meanwhile, Kane is here. She is still alive. She does exist. And she's all like, "Kane." Yeah, she's all like, "Hey, fiance, where the fuck have you been? It's real hard to get in touch yeah. with you and shit." And he's all like, "Oh, why? Well, I've been here the whole time. I've been, I'm just, I've been busy. You know, it's, it's very Hi, hard." Anthony. Oh, good. Hello, can I son? When will you call me big sister? Yeah. Do you want me to get brainwashed and fight you again? <laughs> um, and... You're a tenor, right? Can you meet my eyes? Have you recently been making out with my fiancé? Oh, uh... yeah. Utena struggles to be like, hello, Kane. And Kane's all like, hey, yeah. what up? By the way, my mum's here. Oh, my God, your mother? And then, like, cut back to the same shot of um, Kane in the distance by the door. But now the mother is there, too. And she's all like, ah, oh, Akio, you're here. And then, Good to see then you. When, we rev- when we reverse shot back to Akio, the girls, Anthe and Utena, are gone, and one of those big red rose icons is spinning in the corner of the screen in their place. Mm. Is this like, yeah, is... Now, the question is that I have for you, Nick. Yeah. Is it a metaphor? Is that... Is, yeah, is it a metaphor or is it literal or is it both? I want to say it's a metaphor... Because it's sort of like in a Western movie when the villain and the the protagonist see each other eye to eye and it zooms in on their faces. And it's like it's like the pointing arrows in the Nemoro episode. It's sorry, the pointing fingers. It's mm. now that uh, 
It's focusing the unnamed our mother-in-law yeah. has entered the room. His attention has been entirely pulled away from Anthea and Utena, so they cease to be there in the scene. Yeah, yeah. I think it must be something like uh, they. Maybe it's indicative that this is actually Archeo's true love. Maybe. Well, then, no. Nah. But or oh, maybe please, it's I don't just. Think he has a, oh. I don't think he has a true love. He's an intelligent psychopath. Indeed. Then when we when we reverse shot back to um the Kanai and ugh, I, can, I can never pronounce her name right. Kanai. Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? I don't know. <laughs> I know how I want to say it in my brain. I just can't make my voice do it. Can I? That's probably her name. Can I? Anyway, um, when they reverse shot back to them, she's gone, and just the mother-in-law remains. <gasps> uh, and, and then there's a white rose emblem. Uh, and the very next shot is them alone in the. In the normal like observatory, yeah, in, in, the, the, in observatory. the observatory, yeah, and Akio is swilling a glass of red red wine like friggin' Matt on guard from Phoenix Wright too, <laughs> and he's just like, you know, I have to run this school. You know, I believe I've been performing my duties well enough. Is there something wrong with my conduct lately besides all of the obvious fraternising with high school girls? Um, and at some point they shut the windows so that it's the big night sky. Okay. No, I don't, I don't want to skip ahead to oh, that because okay. there is an important conversation okay. and chain of events. Um, so she, mother-in-law is like, have you been avoiding my daughter? You know, you're, you've only got this job uh, if you marry her and we can cancel the engagement at any time. And he's like, oh, well... I better seduce you now. <laughs> he literally goes in, takes off her shoe. No, no, first he oh. leans in real close to her face and is like, look, I wear her favourite fragrance all the time. Mm. And how is your husband, the chairman? Oh, who cares about him? Great, I'm going to take off your shoe, feel your feet, and then, like, the, um, the, the, what, like, the fuck blast shields come down? The fuck blast shields? Yeah, you know, the, the blast shields that come down ar- around the observatory when people are going to be having sex in there. <laughs> yep, that's pretty accurate. Uh, there are, <laughs> I believe there are two moons in this shot. <laughs> no, Nick, that was back in the, the oh, hand-holding the bedroom. Hand-holding bed. This is yeah. just normal space. Okay. Yeah, this is just normal space. Yeah. Meanwhile, back in class, Wakaba has finally seen Kanai and is so excited. The oh. lieutenant is lost in thought, like, but the only one I truly love is my prince. And then that final flame buffets in the wind to be continued. You forgot one important, uh, uh, one important line, Liam. Oh. Uh, the lady, the mother, as we're panning up, she's like, you're my only prince. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. So- cycles, Nick. Cycles. cycles. Cycles of love and control and shit. I don't like it. Ah. Freaking Akio is just like, oh, my fucking mother-in-law's in town. <laughs> Ah, uh, well, if I... She's... You're going to have sex with her instead of other women. Uh, if I'm going to get fucked, I may as well get fucked. Oh, man. You know, I said it in kind of an off-the-cuff uh, off the cuff uh, way earlier in the episode, but I am generally coming around to the idea that in this show, like, romantic or sexual desire is treated as something, like, sinister and dangerous. Wasn't that, um... Wasn't there... Or at least it's it's a it's something that is frequently used to manipulate people and yeah. it's very hard to be resisted. Wasn't there like, this huge controversy with Game of Thrones that it kind of did the same thing, where it's like sex is not a good thing; it's something you use to like make others do what you I want. Think the more of the controversy in Game of Thrones, I mean, long running show, so there's a lot of tobacco in there. Yeah. Was like just a lot of rape. Oh, also that, but it was like <laughs> it was just very like negative sex depictions a lot. Well, and also, like, I think the thing, particularly in the early seasons, what they did was they would set a lot of their exposition scenes in brothels and just have, like, people fucking in the background, or, or, like, the main focus of the cinematography while people spoke in the background about politics. Mm, mm. Well, you've got to keep the people involved somehow, right? you got to, you know, <laughs> you can't just be talking about exquisite politics and world building if there's no naked women nearby. Like, that's... Yeah, so, like, obviously in... This season and in the first season, um, Akio and Toga both manipulated Utena's emotions to further their ends. Both pretending to uh, be the prince slash implying somehow that they were her prince. Yep. Sionji, Miki, Juri and Nanami are all like prisoners of their like unhealthy attachments. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Some kind of trauma. As is yep. Kazue. Uh, all, of the, all, all of the Black Rose people. <laughs> Well, hang on. The Black Rose people weren't really in love with anyone, but did they have a um, relationship? I suppose, with... other than like, other than like Shiori and um, and Wakaba. Hmm. 
Um, but like then also there's the whole Nemoro Mamiya thing, and similarly the Nemoro um, Tokiko thing. Yeah, and they were their emotions were, towards those people were manipulated by Akio to further his ends. Mm. Mm. It's all about the cycles mm. the, and the emotions that drive us, mm. I guess. The perpetual cycles of mankind. An autobiography by Nick Valentine. What's that friggin' line from the start of Near Automata? Uh, w- which one? There's a lot of lines. The first, the, f- the first line of the game. Oh, something about God, where it's like... Like, we're trapped in an endless cycle of life and death. If I could kill God, then I would. <laughs> I mean, it's a bit more it's a bit more poetic than that, Hang on. but... Uh... Let, me, let me have a look. Near Automata opening line. Analyzing an opening statement by Press Play Gaming. <laughs> Oh, I also found that. Oh, everything that is designed to end. Oh, everything that lives is designed to end. We are perpetually trapped in a never-ending spiral of life and death. Is this a curse or some kind of punishment? I often think about the god who blessed us with this cryptic puzzle and wonder if we'll ever get the chance to kill him. I just realised yeah, wh- that's me. I'm the god. Oh, fuck. Okay. All right. Or maybe it's the developers. Ooh. Who knows? I'm... You know, this is like pretty basic A to B intertextuality, uh-huh. but between um, that line and like the cycles we've been talking about today in this show, mm. and the um, do you remember the bit later on where Adam to 9S is like, you want to beep to be right? And like it's ambiguous, and I think even more ambiguous in the Japanese dialogue whether it was fuck or kill. Uh, oh, I don't remember that, but. Okay, well, that's a significant part of that game. Uh, huh. It's kind. That's not unlike the whole dynamic in this show. Ooh, you're right because everyone wants to fuck, yeah. kill, but never marry. <laughs> like, like... Okay, we're not topping that. Let's move okay. on. Okay, all right. <laughs> well done, Nick. <laughs> uh, goddamn. Um, and that's the end of the episode. Yep. There's no more episode of this episode. That's all there is. There isn't anymore. Highlights and lowlights. Highlights and lowlights. Curious episode. Different different rhythm to the ones we're used to. Yeah. I think my highlight has got to be the friggin' terrifying Anthe looming with the candelabra. <laughs> Bye-bye. That was just like such a potent image, and I <laughs> need to understand what it means. You need to mull over it and just be like, I need those glasses in my brain. Like, I know more. what it means in a symbolic sense, where it's like she feels, Utena, like, both feels bad about discarding her attachment to the prince and also guilty about Akio's relationship with both Anthe and uh, Kane. Mm. But, like, what does it, does it mean, do, does it mean anything? And if so, what in terms of what's Anthe doing? Mm, mm. Maybe Anthe is just doing her best, you know? Maybe she's just trying to be normal and this is her way of expressing herself and we've been judging her wrong this whole time. What if, what if she's an alien? What if the shadow puppets were trying to warn us, Liam? What if <laughs> this whole thing... At the very end, yeah. it boils down the to last, the aliens. The told last us. line of dialogue. The last line of dialogue. Yeah. They're standing over Akio's corpse, uh, and Anthe approaches Utena, yeah. puts her hand on her face, leans in, and says, "One day you'll direct an anime about girls revolutionising exactly. various things." Exactly. <laughs> and then we'll just get a shot of um, what's the what's the guy's name who does the author's oh, notes again? Hang on, let, let me double down, Ikahara. Let me double down though. Okay. And then the in a in a meta textual sense, the anime that Utena directs about that very thing mm-hmm. is the movie. <laughs> uh, okay. Yes. Sure. Nick, your highlight. So my highlight would probably have to be Akio. Um, like, just just the weird dynamic of Akio with um, the, the the mother, like, in the, in the mm. last bit. Like, that entire that sequence of events, right? Where it's like, Kane's there, but then as soon as the mother comes in, you're like, what? And then it's like, oh, so he's just seducing everyone. Oh. That, that's kind of the reason that's my low light, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, it's, like, I know what they're driving at, but it's like, it's a lot in one episode of just like, oh, no one can resist Akio. Yeah, but that's it, right? It's like, no one can resist Akio. So it's like, it's true. how many times has this happened before, you know? Well, we know it's happened at least once before. It raises so many questions regarding that mother. Could she have been a duelist as well? No one knows. I don't mm. know. There's just, oh, oh, cycles. Like oh. It. Yeah. You're low light, Nick. Mm. My low light's probably just going to have to be that the entire crux of Utena falling for Akio was a foot fetish thing. Where it's like, <laughs> take off shoe. <gasps> 
But what, I mean, what if? That, that's getting into that, um, as, as was explicitly drawn attention to like in the, the episode. Cinderella it's getting into metaphor. that yeah, yeah. fairy tale iconography. But it's still just like... It's like kind of a reverse Cinderella. Yeah, see, in that, in that sense, Cinderella lost her shoe and the prince found it to put it back on. In this one, he's taking it off of her and keeping it? Maybe. <laughs> so that now she's just fucking barefoot. Like on every level, it's just I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. So Nick. Yes. Um what do you think it's gonna happen next time in Revolutionary Girl Lieutenant, the episode entitled Her Tragedy and Follow Up Question. Yeah. As we are now um th- what, nine episodes away from the end of this show. Ooh. Where are we going with this whole thing? <sighs> okay, her tragedy. Her tragedy. Her tragedy. I'd, so we, I, who mm. has a sad? Who is a female that has? Well, I guess jury is pretty sad. But, but we've done jury rigs exactly. So that le- that only leaves every other significant female character in the show. Yeah. And we know this is going to be a double app. This one, or it's, uh, we've been warned as much. Yes, yeah, so we've been warned that this one is good as a double app. So it could actually be. Hmm, it's not going to be the vermin, unless it is the vermin. <laughs> No, you know what? I reckon it's going to be a new tenor heavy episode because we've yeah, just had... Yeah, that's a good guess. We've just had this archaeo I mean, ploy. Our options are, I suppose, mm-hmm. of, you know, unless they introduce another Ruka-style new character, which I would be surprised. Yep. Um, Ute- an Utena heavy ep following up on this one. Mm-hmm. A Nanami ep. Yep, as is tradition. Like, I, I, I know, but I assume a serious Nanami ep rather than a, a bullshit crazy oh. one. Oh, Okay. Um, or a something that finally lets us into Anthe's whole deal. Mmm, true, true. What if what if we're gonna get an Anthe app next? That would be a breath of fresh air. Hmm. <laughs> maybe maybe what maybe her tragedy will reference Anthe, right? Mm-hmm. And it'll be about the towing the line between her responsibilities to her home planet and her <laughs> newfound relationships here on Earth. Much like the hit show Invincible, where she will have uh-huh. to explain to Utena that she's actually here Sidebar. To... Sidebar. Sidebar. I was going to guess that you were going to say the hit movie Coneheads. Ah, I haven't seen Coneheads. But... Okay, I haven't seen Invincible, but I assume they're basically the and same thing. And now we're on exactly the same page. <laughs> yeah, sorry, continue. Um, Invincible. Yeah, where at the end he'll just be like, oh, I have to uh, mer- like purge the basically the whole planet. Um, and that's just what has to happen. So my responsibility you know, Nick, is going there. I'm sure you weren't speaking literally then, but this show this show has gone, and I'm sure will go some dark places. I don't think we're going to be touching on genocide. Well, I don't know. What is the cost of immortality? You know, like we burned hmm. down Nemoro Memorial Hall, right, with a hundred kids inside it. So speaking of immortality and eternity, mm-hmm. I have a, a question or a thought. Okay, and this is coming back to that fairy tale thing. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that is like a, a, you know, whether it's by just being deliberately ambiguous or sort of like lost in translation sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the concept of eternity that we're talking about is also interchangeable with like the fairy tale notion of happily ever after. Oh, so instead of thinking of it as like immortality, think of it as... Well, because I mean, just it's, being it's, and, happy together. You know, the way it's been used, that this notion of eternity or the power in the castle or something that is eternal, is it's kind of been used ambiguously and in different ways to different characters. Yeah. But I wonder if that is like it's a sort of it's a sort of uh, as you like it happy ending sort of uh, mm. Mm. concept so, in the story. So just being like, oh, it's not actually about living forever. It's letting every moment feel like forever. That's how. That's not that's what how I was saying, it would but be. great. Yeah. If that's what it means to you. Yep. Sure. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. I don't know what these people think. They're crazy. They're all nuts. There's a floating upside down <laughs> sky castle. <laughs> that's true, Nick. They are all nuts. If there's one thing we can agree on, Nick, I have a, I have so okay, bit of metatextual knowledge in in this, okay. but I've got a real swinging for the fences pitch. Uh, okay. All right. For a for a rest of the show theory. Okay. Hit me with it. <laughs> So metatextual knowledge that I have on this uh-huh. is that um, I remember that from when we were starting this show and we were looking into like the, the arc lengths and things like that, mm-hmm. Wikipedia defines the last six episodes or so as their own arc. Jesus, what? And also with the, the knowledge of the whole turn into a car, drive away from the school situation, <laughs> yeah. my, my like huge Hail Mary guess mm-hmm. 
is that something will happen in the next couple of episodes and Utena dies and then the rest of the show is about Anthe getting independence. Uh, so, so you think Utena's going to die before... Look, I don't think, think this is going to happen. This is just a prediction I'm making. Okay. I, I just reckon Utena will live and take Anthe with her somewhere. Oh, my, okay. So I, if, if I want to be more specific, I'm going to guess that things come to a head with this Archeo situation. They duel and Utena dies. I mean, that's a pretty good prediction, though. That could happen. Uh, that would be good drama. And so, like, the last six episodes would have Utena dying. Or, or incapacitated. Uh, and then it's, you know, it's Anthe's time to do something. Because the Rose Bride is now no longer able to do anything? I don't know. I haven't thought it through that much. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I reckon Utena's probably going to win, though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Because <laughs> um, it's like, if Utena were to lose, right... How does she... She has lost once before. Yes. And then she had to go on a whole soul-searching... Uh, metamorphosis. Get slapped by Wakaba. Yeah. But, like... Journey of the soul. How would she turn into a car if she didn't beat Akio? I don't think that happens in this TV series. I reckon there's something to this theory. That by defeating Akio, you now gain the car power. <laughs> you know? Wow, Utena, by defeating me in a sword fight, there's just one thing I can do now. Here are the keys to my car. This is the deed to ownership. Uh, the academy is yours. Goodbye. Can I turn into the car? Oh, yes, the third button. Sorry, forgot to mention that one. Yep, go for it. Oh, yay. I don't know. I don't. I mean, I get that. I get the sense that. Because Akio and Utena are absolutely going to fucking fight. Like, we know they're going to fight. Oh, absolutely. Fight. Um, but... That's the Kiryu playbook. Yeah, but then. I guess the question is, the last six are a different arc? Or, I don't know, it could just be like a division being like, we're moving into the end game now. There yeah. might not be any actual resolution going between... I didn't read any of the summaries, I just, like, saw the... the, the yeah, what, the, um, what if every... The headings. Yeah, what if every single episode is closing out members of the student council <laughs> on those last six? And then the final, final one is Anthe v. That would Utena. be satisfying. <gasps> Anthe versus Utena. Anthe v. Utena. Just like at the end of A Way Out. Oh my Spoilers. god. Except better <laughs> because it's not dumb. Oh, that would actually be kind of amazing. But then what? Well, mm. we can only dream. Yeah. And we will continue to dream until the next podcast we have. When we awake from our cryo chambers, <laughs> immediately put on a piece of anime and watch it. Excellent. All right. Great. That has been a podcast that we recorded remotely. Woo! We did it. Next time, we hope to be back in the same room because I look forward to Nick losing all this audio. Ah, yep, here we go. <laughs> all right, cool. So until next time, to be continued. Be continued. Sorry, I started reading my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ.